Uh, recessive epistasis. If you haven't watched dominant epistasis, watch that clip first because I think dominant epistasis makes a bit more sense uh, than recessive epistasis. Uh, it just seems to, to fit in more. Learn your books. Um, they, they do recessive epistasis first. So just to, to recap with epistasis, um, it's the effect of one gene um, locus, one, one gene in a particular position, has in, on, on another gene that causes it to be expressed or not. Um, and, and that's you know important. That this, the epistatic gene doesn't actually give the code for, it's not a phenotype, um, so it doesn't make a particular colour. It will simply stop um, another pair of alleles from ex from being expressed or, or will allow them to be expressed or depending on what you get. Now the example in your books for this one uh, I think is actually quite tricky, it's a, a bit fiddly, I don't think it's a very good example but I'll, I'm going to use it and, and talk through it and see if you can work it out. The problem is it starts off talking about um, pure breeding two things together I think that's where it gets confusing. Um, if you look at these crosses and you think that basically what they're going to be crossing is um, look at the colours first of all, so it talks about the plant salvia and it gives you the um, what we call the hypostatic um, gene or the hypostatic alleles and um, we're going to represent that with a capital B uh, the, the dominant and small b for the recessive now what it suggests in the book is that the um, salvia for uh, this will give you a purple colour okay and little b is pink. Now what I'd always recommend in here is you write out first of all what possible combinations you can get. So homozygous dominant in this case will give you purple, uh, heterozygous would also give you purple because of the dominant one and the homozygous recessive one would give you pink. Okay so write out what your uh, possible combinations are first of all. The epistatic alleles in this case Um, because this is recessive epistasis, what needs to happen is you have to get both of the recessive alleles. Okay, so again, what we're going to say here is that if you've got one dominant presence, it allows this to happen. Okay, and the recessive one here will mask it. So again, I'll write out what my possible combinations are. If I've got that, it's fine. If I've got that, it's fine. It will express it. If I've got that, it will mask it and in, in the example of salvia what this ends up being is a white plant okay this combination these alleles don't get expressed and usually with color what you end up with is white if it's not expressed okay so let's now do the cross and this is where in the book it, it's perhaps not clear but the cross we're going to do is the normal kind of um, heterozygote cross so it's going to be that followed by that. Okay, that's what we're going to cross together. And then again, it's a case, excuse me, of just doing your Punnett squares. So I'll stick with these colors. Um, I think on the other one, I'll move these around. It doesn't matter which way, uh, which way around you particularly do this. Um, just by convention, this makes it fairly straightforward. What are my possible combinations? Big A, big B, big A, little B, little A, big B, uh, little A, little B. Okay, so those are my possible gamete combinations. Uh, now, again, I'd always recommend drawing all of these out. Always recommend it um, and use a pencil just to annotate in each box what the phenotype will be. Now, instead of going through everything, I'm going to make this a bit quicker for myself um, because I know that because this is a recessive epistasis, anywhere I get little a, little a, which are basically these four boxes, it doesn't matter what comes next, because in recessive epistasis it will mask, so I know that those four boxes are going to be white. And this is where I'd, I'd make a mark on my sheet, you know, I'd put white or whatever, something so I know what it is in those boxes, okay? Now if I follow through the rest of them, um, it doesn't even matter what the A is anymore, it could be anything, okay? I know that there's at least one dominant present, it doesn't matter what else is there. I know that all of these are going to be expressed, okay? The only thing I've got to look at now is what's the, the, the second combination, what's the hypostatic one? So I'll go through these just to walk them through. 
So hopefully you're following what I'm doing here and I'm going quickly at it. Um, because remember, it doesn't matter which way around you put these. By convention, we put the, the dominant allele first. But we don't have to. Um, there we go. So hopefully you've seen what I've done there and how I've abbreviated it. Again, I'm just going to go through these now and work out what my um, what my alleles are being shown as depending on this. So I've got big B, big B, that's purple, that's purple, because the dominant one, purple, 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 purple. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine purple. And these last three, one, two, three, must be pink. I'll just use a different color just to, I've got a pink. Why not? Obviously, you won't have loads of different colours in your exam, but you, you get the idea. Nine to three to four ratio. That's the number really to remember. If you get that ratio, that indicates you uh, recessive epistasis is going on. So they might give you the number first and kind of work out what's happening, or you might be given something and, and, and work your way backwards. But this is the key to it, okay? Write down what your possible combinations are first before you even approach this. And then as you do it, you put it square, work out what the possible combinations are.